Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast. I'm Joey Dwyer, and to be completely honest, it feels as if disaster has struck on West End. I normally try to come on here, obviously with objective analysis, but maybe with some solutions, maybe with some optimism at points. Tonight feels pretty difficult to muster that. London Humphreys was the prototypical star that Vanderbilt could have been able to keep in the past. He's a Nashville guy. His dad was the track coach at Vandy. London Humphreys is a guy who seemed to really buy into what Clark Lee was selling, at least at the beginning of the year when I talked to him, it felt that way. It's a guy who Vanderbilt made a real effort to keep and I think did a fine job with that. And Humphreys still is expected to enter the transfer portal and probably will transfer in conference. At this point, I don't know how you keep a guy like that. If you can't keep London Humphreys, how do you keep anyone else Humphreys is? one of the guys that you had to be able to keep and one of the guys that it felt like Vanderbilt had a chance to keep and now that it hasn't it's getting more and more difficult to see a path forward for this program there's going to have to be something changed and it's getting harder and harder to see what that is Clark Lee I think can only do so much in this situation a lot of people can only do so much in this situation Vanderbilt had a star receiver everything lined up he's the hometown guy his family was at the games. Vanderbilt made him a fair offer, and he still bolts. Can't blame him. It's just kind of the landscape of things now, and I think tonight was a harsh reality check for Vanderbilt as the portal opened a couple days ago. And Vanderbilt can certainly fill its scholarships with good players. It can allocate the money that it was going to give Humphreys elsewhere. But, man, when your guys just walk out the door like this, even when they seem to kind of buy what you're selling, even when they have connections to the program they have for years, you got to be discouraged. And I think that's where you're at with London Humphreys. I think it's a really, it's a really difficult time for Vanderbilt football and, to be honest, Vanderbilt athletics in general to be able to muster optimism. They went 2-10 and 10 last season, and they're going to lose a lot of their good players from that team. Langston Patterson will come back, which I think is a huge, huge retainment for Vanderbilt. Langston Patterson was probably their best player down the stretch for the last couple of games, was all over the field. That's a tremendous keep for Vanderbilt. But you look at the rest of their roster, they lost their only three quarterbacks who had thrown a pass. To me, that says more about how Vanderbilt is positioning its quarterbacks rather than it's the quarterbacks themselves. Obviously, none of those guys proved to be game breakers, but I don't know that anyone could really prove to be a game breaker in that type of offense where you don't have a run game. You don't block very well, and my fear for Vanderbilt after losing one in Humphreys, losing Jade McGowan, maybe losing Will Shepard, is that I, the one thing they had as a strength on offense last year with the receiving core may not be that anymore. And it's just getting more and more difficult to see the path forward for this team and for this program. They're just up against so much, and we've known that for a while, but when you get punched in the gut like you did tonight, seeing the Nashville guy who really up until a couple hours ago it felt like was going to stay and was going to be a piece of this team's future. When he bolts, there's a lot to question and a lot to wrestle with, and I don't think some of that is fixable. I think that's just kind of how things are in the sport nowadays. That's where Vanderbilt's at in the sport. And you look at that receiver room, it gets a little more bleak. They're going to have some freshmen come in. I think you got to be able to retain Junior Sherrill and a Nashville guy. If you can't retain either of them, I don't know what you can do. But Vanderbilt was 2-10. and 10. Again, hard to see a path forward. McGowan, I think, is a guy who you could kind of live with leaving. You obviously didn't want him to leave. He's a productive player for him that can do some things to kind of counteract a bad offensive line at times with the jet sweeps and the short passes. But you also had Junior Sherrill kind of waiting in the wings there, so you're okay with that one. This one, I think, is one of the – top of the list guys that you had to keep it was cj taylor and london humphreys maybe not even in that order now you look at martel height can they hold on to him can they hold on to some young guys can they hold on to junior share can they hold on to pass rushers it's if if anyone seems to contact those guys it's going to be difficult to hold on to them that's just where vanderbilt's at right now and i don't know what's next for this program i think it has some real looking in the mirror to do, and that's not just because of this, but it brings up issues with this that you look at and say, if they can't retain this guy, who can they retain? 
Vanderbilt lost all three quarterbacks in the portal this week. It lost London Humphreys, who was probably its biggest bright spot throughout the season, at least offensively. And you lose Jalen Mahoney to the draft. He was out of eligibility, but that's a playmaker. There's going to be a, a lot that has to be done here. And Langston Patterson coming back is good, but this has been a such a brutal start to the offseason for Vanderbilt. It's fired Joey Lynch. Maybe it can make an appealing hire to some transfers. Maybe that'll help it retain some guys, but I just, I don't get it. I don't get where the path comes from. Vanderbilt has to be perfect in order to put together a great roster next year. It has to nail all of its evaluations. And even if it does that, it's going to be difficult to see how they're a good team. And if they are a good team, they're going to lose a lot of guys. Even the guys that buy into the vision are going to be poached. And that's just kind of where this stands. This feels like one of the more emotional rapid reactions, but I don't know that what I'm saying is untrue. It just feels like Vanderbilt made an effort here. Um, everything lined up, all the stars aligned, and it still falls short of probably an SEC powerhouse on the other end of this thing. And that's just going to be how it is. And that Vanderbilt's going to have to live with that. It's bigger than a Clark Lee issue. It's bigger than a Joey Lynch issue. Probably bigger than a Barton Simmons issue as well. There's just, I don't know where you move forward here. And uh, maybe one of the more discouraging days for Vanderbilt football in a while. Kind of a similar feel to when Tyron Lawrence went in the portal this offseason. Maybe London Humphreys does the same thing. That would be tremendous for Vanderbilt. That would really spark its offseason like Vanderbilt basketball did with Tyron Lawrence. But it just felt like if someone performs enough, then Vanderbilt's not going to be able to hold on to him. And it felt like at that point that Vanderbilt basketball had to operate like a mid-major to where its best players, if they were good enough, were going to leave. If their guys at the back end of the roster weren't good enough, they couldn't stay. And honestly, it kind of feels like that's where Vanderbilt football is, and that's not to the fault of the staff. It's just kind of where things stand right now. They don't have what other teams have, it seems like. And when you don't win, you're more susceptible to things like this, and it's going to be hard to find a path to Vanderbilt winning. Winning cures all, but money also does the same thing. And I don't know that Vanderbilt does either of those things as well as any SEC team. Actually, I pretty much know that it doesn't. It's just getting more and more difficult to see the path forward here and more and more difficult to see how this program succeeds long term. Something's got to be fixed and it has good players coming in. Dante Carter is a stud. The two quarterbacks looked really good last night in the Chattanooga State Championship. St. Hilaire especially I think is going to be a tremendous player for them. Joey Lynch gone maybe opens the door for some things in the portal once the new OC gets in, maybe that's an encouraging sign to some current guys once you hire an OC. Uh, Clark Lee said he's going to do a national search, and I think that's probably the biggest positive we've seen this week is that they will be doing that national search for the offensive coordinator. Maybe that opens some doors for them. But, man, it's just, like I said a million times in this podcast, it's getting difficult to see the path. And I want to touch on their quarterback thing as well. When you have all three quarterbacks go in the transfer portal, I think it's probably an issue of you more so rather than each individual quarterback. And what I mean by that is, like I said, none of those guys are going to be game breakers. None of those guys are going to carry you to a win. But the way that they seem to handle this thing made it almost inevitable that they were going to have guys go in the portal and they were going to have important guys go in the portal with A.J. Swan, with Ken Seals, with Walter Taylor. All going in the portal, I think, are... Evidence is supported here, and it's going to be difficult to play quarterback at Vanderbilt if you're anybody, uh, especially if you're a transfer who has to deal without London Humphreys and has to deal without other guys. It, the offense might be more difficult to operate for a quarterback next season than it was this season, and that may be saying something. I think maybe the path here, at least for next season, is Vanderbilt trying to beef up on the lines and that's going to be difficult as well just because of the caliber of athlete you have to face in the SEC. We'll have more moving forward on potential fixes and how Vanderbilt can get even, but tonight just feels like a punch in the gut for Clark Lee and his staff and the direction of this program as a whole. 
feels like one player can rarely do that in football, but tonight feels like as Vanderbilt, one of Vanderbilt's freshman stars and future building blocks walks out the door, some hope does as well. I'm Joey DeWire. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with coverage of Vandy's basketball game against Alabama and um, probably more positive tune that day if Vanderbilt loses to that team. I don't even know what to tell you because that is a team that I don't think is very good. So we'll be back. Thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, God bless you all for sticking with Vanderbilt football through all this. Maybe there will be a path forward in the future. But now, what a difficult night for the Commodores.